worshiper in this place to open up their mouth. Hallelujah. And give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. 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 It's for your glory, God. Hallelujah. 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 I can't hear y'all. Y'all too quiet for me in this place. Hallelujah. 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 I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Hallelujah. To the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I get a worshiper? Hallelujah. That's a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all still looking at me. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. Stay right here until y'all open up y'all's mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him in heaven hear y'all. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God. Hallelujah. For being in this house just one more time. Hallelujah. We thank God for being in the land of the living. Hallelujah. We thank God for waking us up this morning. It's something simple. He gave us another day, hallelujah. And we thank God. We praise God. Because it could have been another way. It could have been another situation. But God kept us. He kept us over the dangerous highways, byways, hallelujah. And we thank God, hallelujah. We thank God, hallelujah, for covering us, hallelujah, with his blood, hallelujah. But we come just to worship God, hallelujah. We want God to be pleased with our worship this morning. Hallelujah. We come because it's all about him. Yes. Hallelujah. Not about us, but it's all about him. Hallelujah. Amen. And the song is just simply for your glory. Hallelujah. You, I will do anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just to see him. Hallelujah. Amen. And we thank God. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Jesus. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if I find favor in your sight lord please hear my heart cry i'm desperately waiting to be where you are i'll cross the haunted desert i'll travel near or far for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king say lord if i
God, fill me up. Save you.
God for his presence. Hallelujah. We need God in his place. Hallelujah. Saved, not saved. Hallelujah. We need God to fill us up every day, every minute, every second, every hour. Hallelujah. We need God. Hallelujah. And we thank God because he can fill us up. He can fill whatever void. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you need from God, he can do it in his place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we ain't sing the song, it's, our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Can y'all worship with us in this place? Hallelujah.
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, praise. We thank you for the praise team. Come on, let's clap our hands for the praise team. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. God is good this morning. Amen. He's good all the time. We thank him for you being here this morning and for all those who may be tuning in via Facebook or YouTube. We welcome you to our service. Amen. It's a wonderful spirit in this place today wherein we are glad. 
Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be today? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, clap your hands. All ye people, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve me with gladness. For when I think of the goodness and all that he's done, my soul, my soul, cries out hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in the land of the living today. Good to be in the land of the living. Amen. The Bible lets us to know that a live dog is better than a dead lion. Praise the Lord. So it is good to be here today. Amen. We thank the Lord for our visitors. If you are a visitor here this morning, we'd like to welcome you to our service. But we say to our visitors, you're only a visitor once. And after that, we just say welcome to the family. Let us put our hands together for our visitors today. Yes, he's good today. Amen. My soul, every now and then, my soul looks back and wonder how I made it over. Anybody else's soul, every now and then, just look back and wonder how you made it over? Amen. You could have been dead and gone a long time ago. Amen. But you're still here. We thank the Lord for our musicians today. We thank the Lord for our film crew today. And for all of you that are here. There's no people on earth like God's people. Amen. God's people are the best people in the world. And oftentimes, with something that makes me cringe, but, you know, you hear people talk every now and then about church folk. Church folk are good folk. Amen. Church folk are good folk. Amen. God's people are the best people. Now it does not mean that everybody that comes to church y'all not going to hear me now. It doesn't mean that everybody that comes to church amen is God's people. After all some of y'all here today I'm glad to be here today. This thing is right all by itself. Proving time is coming. Payday's coming after a while. I said payday's coming after a while. Now, one of the one of the worst things, one of the biggest fears that the enemy has is when you begin to talk about the soon return of Jesus. He doesn't want 
the preachers, the ministers, the saints. He doesn't like you to talk about Jesus coming soon. He wants to keep the world in darkness and in blindness as to the fact that he's going to return. But that is one of his promises. Amen. He's coming back again. As sure as he died on the cross. As sure as they buried him. As sure as he rose. He shall come again. The Bible lets us know he's coming as a thief in the night. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's coming as a thief in the night. I'm reminded of the five virgins at the midnight cry. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's prepare ourselves to be ready for the return of our Lord. Joshua, we're not going to be long before you today. Joshua 24. give honor to the Lord. We give honor to Sister Bendolph. She's with her mother today. She's amen. We thank the Lord for her. We thank the Lord for the church mothers and the deacons, the fathers. Amen. We're looking over at some of the sharpest pair of shoes we've ever seen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I'm looking pretty hard at them shoes. Amen. I don't know if you can shout. You, you, you can't shout in them shoes. Father Ship, don't. Don't get too happy today. Yeah, you, yeah, you got to kick them off. You got to kick them off. Don't shout them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sharp pair of shoes. Joshua chapter number 24. Beginning with verse number 14 and verse... 15, we're going to read those two passages of scripture. Joshua 24, 14 and 15. <clears throat> when you have it, say amen. amen. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Destroy the yoke, undo the heavy burdens, loosen the bands of wickedness, bless us in this house today, save, deliver, heal, set free, touch from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, call somebody to change their mind and to leave differently than what they came, bless your people, and we'll be forever careful to give you the praise, glory, and the honor. It's already yours. But we thank you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. I want to use for a subject today, make a move. Look at someone and say, neighbor, it's time to make a move. In the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, <clears throat> and I was 
uh, reading it earlier in the week, the 24th verse and verses 5 and 6. You have to understand that David was on the run for a long time from a, the king named Saul. King Saul didn't like the anointing that David had. And he realized that his time of and his kingdom was coming to a close and he knew that David was anointing and anointed and probably next to be in line. And so he despised David in his heart. There was an evil spirit that came upon Saul to try to uh, get rid of David. He would throw javelins at him and he chased him for years out in the wilderness. One day, David had Saul cornered, and Saul went to sleep. He was in a cave, and the scripture lets us know, and it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed to stress forth mine hand against him seeing he is the anointed of the Lord amen the scripture lets us to know uh, touch not mine anointed neither do my prophets any harm the men of David said we ought to kill him and give him what he deserves because he's been after you for all this time we haven't been able to go home we've been out in this wilderness and we have been uncomfortable, our lives have been uncomfortable for the past 10, 12 years. So David, while Saul is asleep, he cuts off the skirt, just a part, a patch of his robe that he's sleeping in. He could have taken his life. But once David even had done that, the Bible said his heart smote him for what he had done. Because he realized uh, that by doing that, uh, uh, God was not pleased. David was not pleased with himself. And it's a lesson that we can learn there uh, and that we don't take it uh, too serious or as serious as we ought to about uh, touching and messing and speaking on God's people. Amen. We ought not want to do anything to disgrace or harm God's people. Now you may wonder, well, who is the anointed? Well, we know that Saul was king, amen, but Saul had lost his anointing. But all of God's people are his anointed. It's not only the pastor, it's not only the deacons or the mothers, but all of God's people are anointed. So we ought to keep our viciousness off of God's people. Y'all yeah, not want to hurt any of It's dangerous. It, it's dangerous to mess with one of God's people. Amen. Bible lets us know it's better for you to put a, a milestone about your neck and cast it into the midst of the sea other than to mess with one of his little ones. So now you go from there. Amen. Leave God's people alone. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? A lot of people like to talk and just say things about God's people, and they don't know. They keep digging and digging and digging and deeper and deeper and deeper, but you can't mess around. If you know something or you think something about the people of God, you pray about it. But don't you spread it because God doesn't like it. One of the things that God hates is that when we sow discord amongst the brethren. Amen. He hates it when we sow discord. So that means when I go to you and I talk about them. Amen. I'm sowing discord because you may not feel that way about them. But by the time I finish with you, you're going to have the same feeling that I have about them. When they ain't done nothing but been good to you. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. The last day church is which what we are living in. And this is something that we have to take real serious. We are living, Jesus didn't make no mistakes 
at no time had he, has he ever, nor will he ever make a mistake. He's too just to do wrong and too wise to make a mistake. But we are living in the last day church. And that church in the book of Revelation, chapter number three, is known as the Laodicean church. In this last day church, or this La uh, Laodicean church upon which we are, amen, God has no praise for the church. There are seven churches uh, in uh, the book of uh, Revelation, chapters one through three, and the last one is the last day church before Jesus returns, and that is us. Of those seven churches, five of them he has praise for, good things to say about. But this last day church, the church of Laodicea and the church of Sardis, he has nothing good to say about. He says he would rather, you better hear what I'm saying today. He said, I would rather that you would be cold or hot. Uh, if you're cold, I can pick you up and I can work with you. And, and you understand that you're not where you should be. And, and we can work with you and, and things can get better. Uh, or if you were hot, and uh, I would love that you were hot. Because if you're hot and on fire, oh, I'm going to just keep blessing you and you're going to keep praising me and you're going to keep loving everybody the way you're supposed to. So I, I wish that you were hot. When you're hot, amen, I can lead you and guide you. I can send you to talk to people and help people. And your life is your example and people can look at you and say uh, they are a true child of God. Uh, but because God says you're neither cold nor hot uh, and you're lukewarm, he said, uh, I'll spew you out of my mouth. In other words, a lukewarm people, amen, makes God sick. Uh, yeah, he, he, it makes him sick, so he spews us out of his mouth. What is the problem with this last day church that Jesus talks about? Well, it is simple and it is things that we can see plain in our view. Uh, easy for us to understand. He says that you say that you're rich. Uh, increase with goods just because you got a car or just because you, you got a house. Amen. Doesn't mean that you don't need Jesus. Just because you got a good paying job doesn't mean that you don't need Jesus. Uh, praise the Lord. He said that you say that you have these things and you don't need nothing. Some people have gotten complacent because uh, they have what my uncle used to say, a quarter over a bowl of beans. Uh, just because you have accomplished some things in your life doesn't mean that you don't need God. Because the devil knows how to trick you and trip you up with possessions for where your heart is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Uh, but God says about this last day church that you are wretched, you're miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Uh, praise the Lord. In other words, you may have what does it profit a man if they should gain the whole world but lose their soul. Well, what is it going to do with you or for you if you leave here today with $10 million in the bank? It's not going to do you no good. For when you go to the cemetery, there are millionaires and there are people that didn't make over $10,000 in their life. But there is the same width and the same length of hole they going to dig for you as they going to dig for Bill Gates. Y'all ain't going to pray for me now. So my brothers and sisters, it's time for us to understand that we must get on fire. We must get on fire for our community. I don't want nobody looking at me saying praise the Lord. Uh, if that's what 
church is all about. I want no part of it. But I want people to look at me and say the same God that he has. Don't you want this person to say the same God that she has is the God that I want. It's how that you carry yourself. Your mouth is not your witness, but your life is your witness. Somebody shout hallelujah. So now, my brothers, we're living in dangerous times. I was talking to someone on the phone the other day. I believe it was even on yesterday. We were talking about uh, uh, certain places. And I asked the question, I said, do they still have, uh, and, and I'm not out of touch with what's going on in the world, uh, but I asked, I said, do they still have, uh, do people still go out to the nightclubs? And I was talking in the Columbus, do they still have nightclubs? Because they had nightclubs like uh, Frankie J's and Freddie, Fre Freddie J's, Frankie's, you know, those Alexander's, yeah. I said, do they still have those places? And the reason I asked, and because it's so dangerous nowadays, do you not know that there were two killed last night, 20 injured? At a, at a club down in Florida? Do you not know that there have been over 230 mass murderers, uh, mass murders in the United States this year? Praise the Lord. So people are still taking a chance going out mingling uh, amongst one another. I seen a video on yesterday how three men got out of the car on Livingston Avenue and began to shoot up a young girl. Praise the Lord. It used to be where young men may have taken the lives of young men. Amen. But nowadays, uh, the young ladies ain't even safe. Shot into that young girl's car nine, ten times. Praise the Lord. Got in their car and drove off. We are living in some perilous times. We're living in dangerous times. That's why I said to you today that I'm glad to be in the land of the living one more time. Didn't have to let us live, but we're here today. We have an opportunity to get ourselves together. We have an opportunity to make our wrongs right and get right with Jesus. Because I want you to know that only what you do for Christ is going to last. Can somebody say amen? I'm almost finished. I'm not going to be much longer. But when we get into our text today, and uh, we find that Joshua, the man of God, uh, Joshua has done great things. He is the successor of Moses. The children of Israel have now come out of the land of Egypt where they were in bondage for 400 years. Genesis 15 and 16 says uh, that the iniquity or the sins of the Amorites was not yet filled. But when the iniquity of the Amorites was filled, then God would bring his people out of the land of Egypt. What is it in uh, Genesis 15 and 16? What is it talking about? When the iniquity of the Amorites be filled, God was waiting uh, in his mercy and in his justice for them to earn their judgment. They had judgment coming to them, but after 200 years, they had not yet acted up enough. But God had judgment planned for them, and when they got to the point where God said, I have had enough, this is the judgment that I'm going to give you. Brothers and sisters here today, Facebook, YouTube, amen, God is a loving God. Nobody loves us like God. Nobody is as kind as God. I was laying in my bed the other day and I was just thinking, God, you're so, so kind. Thank you for just being kind to me. Uh, but as much as he is loving and as much as he is kind, God is a God of justice. And because he is a God of justice, he must do that which is right according to his word. 
That's where judgment comes in. God gives us ample opportunity, amen, to come to him and to serve him with all sincerity, to serve him in the beauty of holiness. Amen. The Amorites were a mean people. They served other gods, praise the Lord. They served a god called Molech. Molech caused them to bring their children and throw them in the fire. Amen. They served a God that they would offer up their children as sacrifices for more money. Amen. They had other gods, praise the Lord. Amen. But these gods had no power to deliver. They were murderers. They were hateful people. Amen. They were wicked in the name of the Lord. And so God being merciful like he has been merciful to us has come to the place in time to where he has said enough is enough. I've been merciful to you. I've been gracious to you, but you've gone too far. I'm so glad today, amen, that God was merciful to me, and I'm glad today that I didn't go too far. I'm glad that I came in, praise the Lord, before my time of foolishness expired. Hallelujah, because when your time of foolishness expires, amen, it can be too late for anybody to help you anywhere. I wish I had somebody today. Somebody, if they could, they could tell you today, get right church and let's go home. Serve the Lord. He's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Well, my brothers and sisters, it's not too late as long as you got blood running warm in your veins to call on him. The Bible says call on him while he is near. He said if you call on him, he would answer. He said I'll be a very present help in the time of trouble. You don't have to leave here the same way you came. And one thing about God is God is not a God of foolishness. Uh, you can come in here and act foolish all you want to, but God sees right through your foolishness. Uh, amen. You can't, uh, you can't drink the same bitter water and sweet water. It's not from the same fountain. Either you're going to serve the Lord. Uh, amen. And get hot. Uh, amen. Or oh, your time is coming after a while. Somebody shout hallelujah. This thing is holiness and it's holiness all by itself. I don't care what's over the door of your church or any other church. The word of the Lord is true all by itself. I wouldn't want to go nowhere and they told me that I wasn't blessed just because I didn't have no money. I wouldn't want to go nowhere and sit in front of thousands of people and hear a motivational speaker talk to me about things that has nothing to do with my salvation. But tell me what sin is. Tell me that I got to live right. Tell me that I got to do what the Bible says don't pet me and smooth me and I bust hell wide open but provoke me to live right so that I might see his face in peace somebody shout yes Oh, my God, my God. Yes, this is the last day, church. This is the church that God has nothing good to say about. What God admonishes this church to do is 
to reap. Repent. Uh, he said repent and if you repent praise the Lord uh, go back to your first love uh, then I will bless you aren't you glad about it somebody shout glory well my brothers and sisters uh, amen you got a lot of false prophets in the land today Jesus said these things would come. You got people that aren't concerned about your welfare, not concerned about your soul. Amen. But your soul, amen, is the most important thing in your existence, your soul. Amen. I want your soul to be saved. If you don't bring another dime in that, this church, that's all right. But let your soul be saved. If you don't sit in here and clap your hands, that's all right. Just as long as your soul is saved. I don't care if you never put on a suit or you never come in with a glory of Vanderbilt dress. That's all right. Just as long as you're saved. Just as long as you say, Jesus is the center of my joy. I love him. I love him. I love him. Somebody shout glory. long as your soul is saved. Amen. And I want you to know that some things that you're going to have to give up if you want your soul to be saved. But that's all right. Give them up. It'll pay off after a while. What you give up, God will bless you. Shake down good measure running over. He'll flow it into your bosom. I wish I had a witness in here. Can somebody lift up your hands and throw your head back and say yes? Amen. No man that has forsaken houses and lands, mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers that God will not in this life. Amen. Bless you. God's got a blessing for you. Amen. You can't even imagine. Amen. The best thing, I'm here to tell you, the best thing that could ever happen to anybody is when the Spirit of God comes in their life and they are filled with his Holy Ghost. Nothing else compares. Nothing else compares. Amen. They used to sing a song, there ain't but one thing that I've done wrong, and it's Jesus saves. Jesus saves. What was that one thing? Is that I stayed a sinner too long. Jesus saves. Amen. One of the first things that you'll say is, why did I wait so long? If I'd known it was this good, I'd have done this a long time ago. But can't nobody explain to you how good it is. You got to try him for yourself. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to try him for yourself. Say yes. Oh, God, I can't explain to you how good he is. You got to try him for yourself. You got to see for yourself. But I make a declaration to be they, today that if you try him, amen, and if you're not satisfied with him, try him. If you don't enjoy him, you can always go back. But I decline. Oh, God. Amen. Try him. I declare he'll be the best thing that'll ever happen to you. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Give me 10 more minutes of your time. Joshua. Joshua. The successor of Moses. 
has been given a task to take the children of Israel into the promised land. Moses speak to the rock. Moses smote the rock. Moses, you can't enter in. Joshua is going to take my people to the promised land. Moses, go up into the mountain. I'm going to bury you there. God buried Moses in the mountain. Joshua sent him over. Once Joshua began to take charge, the Bible lets us to know that there are some events that took place into his life, in his life. One of the first things that Joshua did is he sent some spies over across the Jordan. Go and see what they're like over in Jericho. Because they were still on this side of the Jordan. The promised land was over here. Jericho was over here. Jericho was in between them and the promised land. But we got to spy out Jericho because we got to go through here before we get through there. Are you still with me? He sends out the spies and as the spies are casing out Jericho, the men of Jericho said something's going wrong. There's some strangers in the place. So the spies found a hiding place. And that hiding place was in the home of a harlot by the name of Rahab. Rahab, if you hide us, God is getting ready to bring his people over into Jericho. And the God that we serve is going to give us the victory. Whether you turn us in or not, amen, God is still going to give us victory. But if you hide us, when we go back, you put a scarlet ribbon on your window. And when we come, we will not destroy you and your house. The harlot said, let it be so. So she hides them and later on that night they go back with the report to Joshua and the report is we can conquer. I wish I had somebody that had faith today. Turn to your neighbor and say neighbor we can conquer. Well Joshua amen uh, the, the word and the uh, the prosperity and the greatness of God gets to Jericho. And they hear about uh, the people of Israel. And they know about this great God that they serve. How that that great God delivered them from the superpower Egypt. Not only did he deliver them from the superpower Egypt, but he opened up the Red Sea. How in the world could he open up a Red Sea and they walk over on dry land? The people of Jericho are afraid, not of the men and women of Israel, but they're afraid of their God. Well, Jericho was a fortified city. It had walls all around and impenetrable walls. And so when Joshua, amen, had crossed the Red Sea, across the Jordan River, and one thing about the Jordan River that he had to cross, they crossed during high tide. You see, the devil was trying to set up a trap that you ain't going over there, at least not yet. So they wait three days and still high tide. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
I hate this Jordan. It never seemed like it's going down, but God said, enough is enough. Let it rise a little bit higher. I come by to tell somebody your trouble, your pain, and your hardship may get a little bit worse, but God is setting you up for a miracle. God is setting you up so that you know that it is him and him alone who has delivered you. Somebody shout glory. The water got real high. And God said, it's time to go. Instead of waiting for it to go down, God said, get the priest and get the ark and let them get in front of you uh, by a football field and let them walk over across the Jordan even during the current and the high tide. So the priests had faith because if that's what God says, that's what they're going to do. They put the ark up on their shoulders, not up on the cart like David did, but they carried the ark the way they were supposed to carry it for priests upon their shoulders because God must be lifted up. They put their feet in the water and when their toes touched the water of the swollen Jordan River, the waters begin to divide. Look at the God that we serve. So when the priests went forth and the waters opened up, the rest of the children of Israel went over. When Jericho hears this, all they do now is shut the doors, shut the gates. Not only did he deliver them through the Red Sea, but they've come through the Jordan during high tide season. Well, they're afraid now, and when Joshua gets there, he looks at the city and says, Lord, how are we going to get in this city? We can't get through the doors. We can't get through the gates. They're too fortified. And God said, march around the city and march around seven days. On the seventh day, I want you to begin to praise me. First day, walk around and just glorify me and just worship me and let me know who I am. But on the seventh day, I want you to bring out the tambourines, bring out the horns and give me crazy praise. Is anybody right at the threshing floor? at the threshing floor of something getting ready to happen in your life, uh, then what you got to do now is give God crazy praise. If you're giving crazy praise, uh, he'll open up the door. If you're giving praise, uh, amen, he'll fix the situation. Uh, he'll bless you with the job. He'll give you the pay raise. Uh, somebody say, I'll praise him uh, with my whole heart. Uh, somebody say yes. Say yes. So on the seventh day, the walls come tumbling down. Well, they conquered Jericho. They conquered Ai. And they're continuing to move forward to the promised land. The Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, they gather themselves together and they make war against them. But God gives them the victory. Amen. Then one war when all other nations had gathered themselves together again in the 10th chapter of Joshua. Joshua is running out of daylight and Joshua speaks to the sun and the moon and says sun and moon be still. Be still for a 24 hour cycle. And when Joshua looked up into the sun and told the moon 
be still. The sun stopped uh, and the moon stopped and Joshua was able to run down uh, the armies that had gathered themselves together against them. Who would not serve a God like this? This same God is coming and it won't be long. He's coming at an hour that you think not. Uh, he's coming to get his people uh, and woe unto the inhabitants of the earth uh, who have not prepared themselves uh, and made themselves ready. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's coming soon. It may be morning, night, or noon, uh, but Jesus is coming soon. Well, then, after they have conquered on that side of the Jordan and this side of the Jordan, Joshua devised the land with the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, now, in our text, what we have reached now, Joshua is giving his farewell. Uh, the people have seen all the things that God has done. Some of the things that I've just gone over with you, plus more. They have seen these things that, and they have known that it was God on their side. I want to note right there, some things have happened in our lives and we know that we know that it was God. You could have been dead a long time ago, but my brother and sister, whoever I'm talking to, it was God that spared you and kept you in the land of the living. They try to kill you. Drugs try to kill you. But they didn't happen because God spared your life. These people had seen the works of God. They seen him cause the walls of Jericho to fall. They've seen the sun and the moon stand still. They seen them God give them victory when they were outnumbered 10 to 1. They seen God open up the Jordan River. They seen the works of God and now in our text today Joshua said as if it seems reasonable or unreasonable or unto you to serve the Lord. I don't know how it could be unreasonable, but if it seems unreasonable for you to serve the Lord, then choose you whom you will serve. Will you serve the gods that your fathers served over in Egypt? Amen. Or will you serve the gods of the Amorites. Amen. I want you to know the Amorite gods. Amen. They are the kind of gods that put you to sleep. The gods over on the other side said, we got you bound. They got you captive. You know, there are some vices in our life that seem to have us captive. Uh, they won't turn us loose. But God has delivered us from those things. God has brought you. I'm talking to this church right now. God has brought you from a long way. You may not be be what you want to be or what you're going to be but you can stand and testify today that I'm not what I used to be. So Joshua says are you going to serve those gods? Those gods that oppressed you depressed you, kept you in bondage, kept your mind messed up, couldn't get ahead because of the things that held you down. Your vices held you down. Are you going to serve those gods? Or are you going to serve the gods of the Amorites? The Amorites now that you've been somewhat loosened and somewhat set free and you've come over the Jordan, the Amorite gods says calm down cool down you don't need to go no further uh, you ought to get comfortable now because uh, at least you don't do what you used to do can I talk to you now the Amorite gods will put you to sleep 
They will make you think uh, uh, that I'm over here and I'm doing much better. I'm going to go ahead and ride this out for now. But Joshua says, uh, are you going to serve the God of the Egyptians or the gods of the Amorites? He goes on to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're not going to get complacent with what we used to be and what we are now, but we're going to take the next step because there's another step that is necessary look at somebody and help me now and say to the neighbor there are other steps that are necessary yes uh, your your progress has been good uh, amen but greater works uh, God has for you uh, uh, proud of you that you don't go where you used to go but there are some other things uh, that God has for you uh, somebody is time for you uh, to make a move uh, give your neighbor a high five uh, and say to your neighbor neighbor it's time for you uh, to make a move uh, as for me and my house uh, we gonna get down to the real uh, we gonna look for the God uh, that has delivered uh, I want to serve the God uh, that made a way for me. Uh, I want to serve the God uh, that spared my life. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that God has spared your life? Uh, if God spared your life uh, and you know it was him, uh, throw up your hands. Uh, throw back your head. Uh, say thank you, Jesus. Uh, now make a move. Uh, Joshua said, uh, choose today. Uh, don't wait till tomorrow. Uh, but choose today. Uh, tomorrow might be too late. Uh, there is a blessing uh, in today. Uh, there is a miracle uh, in today. Uh, deliverance. Uh, joy. Uh, and peace uh, is for you today. Uh, don't wait. Uh, come on down. Uh, come on down here. Uh, come on, young man. Uh, come on, young woman. Uh, today is the day. Uh, clap your hands uh, and shout glory. Uh, look at somebody uh, and encourage them. Uh, say the day is your day. Uh, today uh, is your day. Uh, Choose him, choose him, choose him. Somebody that's in this house need to choose him. I wish I had somebody that could say today is my day. Turn to another neighbor, say neighbor, make a move. All you gotta do is stand on your feet make a move all you gotta do is say Lord I'm sorry all you gotta do is come to the altar repent of your sins all you gotta do is go down in the water in the name of the Lord Jesus all you gotta do is call on him he will fill you he will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Say yeah. Say yeah. Turn to another neighbor. Say neighbor. Make a move. God is waiting. God is waiting. Waiting for you. Not next week. Not next month. Not next year. But today. Today is the appointed time. Say yeah.
today. Joshua said, it's for me and my house. We going to serve the Lord. God of the Amorites, they don't have no power. They made out of stone, iron, wood, brass. They got eyes, but they can't see. They got mouths, but they can't talk. They got ears, but they can't hear. But the God that we serve, he never sleeps, neither is he weary. There's no searching to his understanding. Yes, he gives power to the faint. Y'all ain't going to pray with me now. He is the only God. Beside him, there is none other. He made heaven and earth. Yes, he did. He made the sun and the moon. He made the trees. He made you. Oh, yes, he did. I give him a chance. He said, I give him a chance again this morning. And if they would hearken to my voice, I'll make a difference in their life. But I say, what happens if not, Lord? What happens if not today? He said, it would be based upon my mercy. Some folk this week, their mercy ran out. There was a man who was fit, physically fit, riding his bike on yesterday. Had an accident. Don't know what happened. But he's dead today. Praise be to God. Riding the bicycle. You don't know when God's going to call your name. But I want you to know that when he calls your name, you can be ready. And if you leave here today, my God, my God, you can leave here today ready. It's up to you. Make a move. Make a move. Oh. God's better than that man. God's better than that woman. God's better than what you putting in your body. He's better. Oh, he's better. He's good. He's good. I woke up this morning and he's good. I laid down last night. He was good. He's good all the time. You can make it. They told me when I got in church, I was a young man. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. My friends told me, I give you, I give you three weeks. I had a job. With all the benefits, everything that I needed was at that job. If I wanted to eat, I had sardines and Vienna sausage. 
Everything that I needed, as far as the legal activities, was right there at my fingertips. Said, I give you three weeks. That was 34, 35 years ago. I went to that job. I said, I can't work here no more. I said, I can't work here no more. I can't sell these lottery tickets no more. I can't sell these cigarettes no more. I said, I can't sell this alcohol no more. I said, I got to go. And I thank God that he understood. But if he didn't understand, that's all right. Because I found a friend in Jesus. He's been my friend. Oh. Oh, my God. He's been my friend. I don't necessarily have to look for friends. I got the best friend. Now, I like to talk to him. And every now and again, and I'm trying to close, I think in my mind, well, maybe I ought to call such and such and ask them. But then moments later, I think, and I'm getting very accustomed to it. I don't have to call nobody and ask them what to do. I can ask Jesus. I can ask him. And if he doesn't answer me right away, I'll just keep on living. But the answer's coming. Everybody's on your feet right now. Are you ready to make a move? You ready to make a move? God's got God's got to work for some people in here. Amen. God's got to work. God can use you. He can use you as a great instrument in these last days. He's waiting for you. He's been waiting a long time just for you. He's got to work for you. He's got to work. And it's one thing to know when he has a work for you because you know that he has a work. What are you waiting for? Choose you this day. Like Queen Esther, somebody was brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. In other words, you are here today so that you could hear again God saying, I want to use you. No one else matters. Friends, mother, father, sister, brother, no one else matters. God will take care of you. 
Is there another today? We thank God for this man right here. God bless you, Sister Yolanda. God can use people and bless them and cause great things to happen behind them. Is there another? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Is there another? Come on, young man, young woman, come. Hallelujah.